Hi, I'm Greg Lambrecht, one of the founders and inventors of the Barricade System. I'm going to walk you through how you use the bone foam implantation system to train a surgeon either in an office visit or prior to surgery. It's a very good idea to run through a bone foam implantation if you can, five to ten minutes before the surgeon scrubs, just so that they get comfortable with the procedure before they start again. When preparing for surgical support, it's really important to get a couple of messages across to the surgeon. The things that I like to say are, I'm going to be speaking in surgery to help guide you through surgery. Just tell me when this is not okay. Barricade is a fluoro-guided procedure, so you will need to put on lead before you scrub, along with the rest of the surgical team. The incision needs to give you access to either end plate and should be made just over the mid-plane of the target disc. This is one to two centimeters cranial to your normal incision. If you use tubular retraction, I would like to ask you to start with a 22 millimeter to give you easy access until you become comfortable, more comfortable with the procedure. Finally, barricade requires more bone removal than your standard discectomy. We like to use the alignment trial during surgery to give you a guide as to how much bone you need to remove from the superior lamina. After your discectomy, the first step of the barricade procedure is to measure the defect. There are three goals with this phase. The first is to see if the patient is indicated. The second is to pick the appropriate implant size. And the third is to confirm that you have a full thickness defect. Start by measuring height. The size and paddle start with four millimeters and five millimeters. Hold the paddle with only two fingers and keep increasing in size until you feel mechanical resistance. When you start feeling resistance, that's your size. This is the five millimeter and I'm beginning to feel resistance. So this defect is five millimeters tall. Anything between four and six millimeters is okay for height. Now we measure the width. I suggest starting with the five millimeter. If the five millimeter does not fit in, the defect is too small and the patient is not indicated. If it does, continue checking the width until you start to feel resistance. The appropriate defect sizes are between six millimeters and 10 millimeters. That was the six, this is the seven. Now the eight, begin to feel a little bit of resistance, and then the nine millimeter. As soon as you feel that popping sensation, that's your width. Finally, we want to confirm that we have a full thickness defect. Take the smallest of the size of paddles and insert it into the annular defect and into the nuclear space. Take a lateral fluoro to confirm. Now the alignment trial. The alignment trial simulates the loaded delivery tool. There are three goals with the alignment trial. First is to make sure that you're down against the back of the target vertebra. Second is to make sure that you're on the target end plate. And the third is to make sure that an imaginary line drawn from the bottom of the tool on the lateral fluoroscopy never crosses the end plate. So parallel with the end plate is fine, angled into the target vertebra is fine, but angled at the target end plate is not okay. If, it, if you're unable to position the tool correctly, it's good to check the opposite vertebra. It may be easier to reach. So again, against the back of the target vertebra, on the target end plate, and an imaginary line from the bottom of the tool never crosses the end plate. So this is okay angled into the vertebra is okay, that is not okay. Once you have the correct position confirmed, save that floral image and move it to the right screen for future reference. The goals with the delivery tool are the same as with the alignment trial. That you're down against the back of the target vertebra, that you're on the target end plate with no gap in between, and that an imaginary line drawn from the bottom of the delivery tool never crosses the end plate. There is a fourth, and that's rotation. There are two end plate guides that rest on the target end plate. If you see two in a lateral fluoro, you're rotated out of plane with the end plate. You'll want to see only one. This means that you're rotationally correct. I want you to take a fluoro image while you're hold your last fluoro image while you're holding the mallet in your hand so that you don't have to reach for anything and change position inadvertently uh, before you start to strike uh, the strike cap. You will want to retract the nerve root at the level of the base plate of the uh, anchor toward the bottom of the delivery tool. This is where the anchor comes out and you don't want 
the nerve to be in the way. To hold the delivery tool, you want to hold it by the blue handle when you're inserting into the wound. If you need to remove from the wound for any reason, pull up on the white strike cap. In with blue, out with white. You want to make sure that you hold the blue handle with your whole hand. You do not want to hold it with only two fingers. This will not give you adequate rotational control or resistance against bounce back. So hold the whole handle with your entire hand and brace your arm against the patient. Again, you want to take the last image with the mallet in your hand. When hammering, your goal is to get the ledge on the strike cap down to the top of the blue delivery sheets. Everyone's bone is different, so you want to start with lighter taps of the hammer and keep increasing the force until the strike cap advances. As soon as it does, we'll take a floor shot to make sure everything's okay. So floor here, everything's okay. You keep hammering until you are fully deployed. strike cap is lined with my blue sheet. Now I want to separate the pusher from the implant using the retraction wedge. Simply place the retraction wedge against the strike cap and push until you feel the release. To remove the strike cap, press the silver button and pull up. Now we will pull up on the blue sheath while pushing down on the pusher. To remove the pusher from the epidural space, tilt toward the disc and lift up while retracting the nerve root. It's good to run a tool across the back of the implanted vertebra to make sure that you cannot feel the anchor and confirm that it is countersunk into the target vertebra. Take one final fluoro, check for any bleeding, and you're done.